So how was your day? Good. I just I got to do a, a little sawing. I got to do a little grinding. Well, that's good. Any day you get to play with rocks is wonderful. <laughs> well, today is April 2nd, which marks our second live feed uh, for the gem shop. But that also means that yesterday was April 1st, which was April Fool's Day. Did anyone get you with any tricks? No, but staying six feet away from everybody makes it kind of hard for people to play tricks on you. I see. Okay, well, April 1st is actually also the gem shop's birthday. Yesterday marked 49 years of the gem shop being in business. Yay! 49 years ago, he started this company. Can you believe it? No. I got you a present, though. What? I got you a present. A present? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is a mouse trap. I talked about this last last week, and um, here it is. Um, it's made out of a five-gallon bucket, a simple paper bag, and it's some string or rubber bands or whatever you want to tie with it. It's stretched across the top, and then you cut two, two strips in there so that, so that the, this can fold down um, and then what you have to do if you want to use this is hang a another string over the top so that the end of the string comes about three inches from from uh, the center of the bucket here and then you put a little peanut butter on there and that's what attracts mice well it works that's that's good enough <laughs> I wanted to explain about the mice, <laughs> and I'm going to. Okay. If you have a little a mouse, you have to have access to this, a board or whatever. The mouse crawls up on here, and it smells that peanut butter, which it wants very badly. Crawls out on this paper, and it starts to fall in, and it backs up. It stands up on the edge, looks at the peanut butter, and says, oh, I'm going to go get that peanut butter. Runs out here and falls in the bucket. Well, now you have one for your next mining operation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is our second live feed on Facebook. Um, now that we have closed retail store doors and our shows have been canceled, we've been trying to figure out different ways to still be dedicated to revealing the beauty of the mineral world, which is what the jump shop is dedicated to. So in, in that tradition, we are doing this through a live feed on Facebook. Thank you all for being here. Today uh, is our, our feature today. Um, the gem shop is 49 years old and was very early on after you formed the company that you first imported Botswana agate, wasn't it, Gene? Yes, I believe it was in 1976 that we imported our first Botswana agate. <clears throat> so five years into the, the, the yeah, business, five years into the you business. said, I'm going to start to import rock. And what attracted you to this stone? Why, uh, why did you go after it? Okay, uh, you have to understand that um, Botswana agate and Lake Superior agates are somewhat similar. Uh, they have similar banding patterns. <clears throat> And some other similar characteristics and I was raised on finding Lake Superior agates. The first agate I found was when I was eight or nine years old um, hunting a gravel road in Minnesota and I found a red white banded Lake Superior agate. Anybody who collects agates and has hunted for Lake Superior agates understands how difficult they are to find, especially in any size. Um, in the early 1970s, I went to a rock shop and saw a bin of Botswana agates. And I was amazed. These agates looked similar to the Lake Superior agates. They weren't, but they looked similar. And I was just thoroughly amazed <coughs> at seeing um, a, a bin full of Botswana eggs. You would never find a bin full of Lake Superior eggs. So this was back in 1976. So 
the world was a different place in 1976 than it is definitely today. There was no internet, no computers, no PayPal, no Venmo. Like, how did you go about getting this rock and paying for it? Um, the first thing I did after I decided we should try and get some of these, um, it was more out of curiosity than anything else. I sent some letters to the Botswana government. I asked them um, if they could help me find some of these agates or if they would know of any exporters that, that, that sold the agates. The Botswana sources for Botswana agate, both based out of South Africa. After I realized that I didn't have enough money to, to buy what they were selling, so I went to the bank. So I sat in front of the loan officer's desk and told him that I would like to borrow some money for the company. The man sitting across the desk looked at me and said, let me get this straight. You want this bank to lend you money to buy some rocks that are in South Africa? And I had to explain further, you know, that my business uh, kind of polished rocks and that um, maybe this would be a good thing for the company. Uh, anyway, after uh, um, listing everything I owned as collateral, the bank decided to lend me the money. So once you had the money and the you know, permission from the bank and, and these you go in, con in contact with these companies in South Africa, what did you decide to order the first time? And how, how did you decide? What did they offer? Their, uh, the price lists that they had offered the Botswana agate in basically four uh, categories. You could buy um, whole nodules, um, you could buy whole nodules and broken pieces mixed together. Uh, you could buy pink Botswana agate. Uh, or you could buy carnelian Botswana agate. The carnelian Botswana agate was basically small, tumbling material, kind of an orangish-red color. Um, so... So you, you bought, you decided on the ton of broken and, and whole nodules the first time you imported, but they were right. offering that whole nodule option still until right. 1978, correct? Correct. And then what yeah. happened? Yeah. Um, there was a lot of Botswana agate being imported into the country, not only by the gem shop, but other companies as well. And in South Africa, um, they were, they noticed they were selling more whole nodules than anything else, so they decided to stop offering whole nodules as a possibility for export. You had to buy it mixed, both whole nodules and broken pieces, Effort. from about 1978 on. So, uh, we're talking about Botswana agate. What is Botswana agate known for? Um, <clears throat> uh, Botswana agate is, is a nodular banded agate with a very strong uh, white banding um, with a contrasting gray banding or pink or a rose colored other banding. It's um, also known for um, a characteristic of the banding where the center of the banding in the nodule is very close to the surface um, of the nodule. So it's like it's like off center. It's not not concentric. So another characteristic found in about 5% of Botswana agate are the eye formations that occur in Botswana agate. And I have a few here that I'm going to show you from Jean's collection. But do you want to talk about mm -hmm. eye agates for a little bit? Eye agates, um, or the term eye agate, refers um, generally to any circular concentric banding. However, categorically, it refers to a formational event that occurs in any nodular agate. <clears throat> this formational event creates uh, a perfect 
uh, semi-sphere side edge of the nodule. So this one here is pretty special. You'll see this one in um, featured in our our calendar that we produce every year as the very center agate. And here it is in person. This oh, agate was, isn't it? Oh no, it's not no, the one. It's, this is a different one. It's a different one. Well, still pretty awesome uh, yes. agate there. We'll see some more and actually um, offer some of agates for for sale here in a second. So should we look at some of those agates here? Let's come on over. We'll start our sales area, our, our section for tonight's live feed. This is how it goes. Um, everything, there's 130 items. Everything has a number with it. If you would like to uh, bid on that number or reserve it for yourself, simply comment in the feed line of the number of the agate that you see that you like. First person to comment with that number is the lucky winner or a new owner of the agate. So here are some nicely banded agates. Numbers one through seven here are $10 each. $10 each for these little specimens here. There's number four. So Botswana agate, you can see some of that gray and striking white banding on those. Here's a little, a smaller one, but has a really nice pink center on number seven. So numbers eight through 14 are gonna be $15 each. $15 on number 10. There's a nice Botswana agate. Number 11 is for the pair, $15 for the pair. Nice little pink floater on there. Number 12, $15 for the pair. Number 13, $15 for that one there. Full center, banding to the center. Number 14 is the first pink Botswana that we have featured here. That's that other type of Botswana that was available uh, way back in the 70s. I have a few of them through these trays. We'll get to a few more. Numbers 15 through 28 are $25 each. There's some nice uh, banding, and you can see, like, especially in number 18 here, that, that center of the banding that Jean was talking about that is a characteristic of Botswana is all the way, like about one third down or even farther on this one from the nodule, the end of the nodule. There's another pink Botswana there, number 19. Again, these uh, numbers 15 through 28 are $25 each. Simply just comment with the number in the feed if you're interested. There's a nice Botswana. I really like the edge of this one. It has some nice kind of swirly tube formations with the banding going around. Nice striking center in that one, number 24, $25 each. 25 has a slightly curved surface. 26 is the matching pair to 18 if you're interested. $25 a piece on these. This one has some unusual, um, what I've heard to be referred to as snow-like uh, features in there, these little white kind of snow-like features. <laughs> I don't know what to say else. Um, number 28 has a really nice striking blue band in the center. Uh, the next two trays, numbers 29 through 52, are going to be $40 each or $40 for the pair. There's a really nice pink one. $40 each on these. There's an orangey center on that one, number 33. Number 34, a nice banding all the way to the center. Number 35 has that pink uh, center there. That's another pink Botswana. Is it this one? Yeah, we can see this parallax in here. Can you see it? What's the question? Evan, I need you. I can't read it. Pastels? Palettes. I don't know what that... <laughs> or 
<laughs> I can't read it, honey. Patelets. Oh, that's to refer to that those snow-like formations. Thank you, Bob oh. Wright. There's another one coming up. Uh, 38 is that pink Botswana again. 39 is what uh, Bob Wright is referring to as those white snowflake formations inside. Um, number 40, I love this. It has some wonderful parallax. Can you see that? Parallax is a, a form of play of light. It forms with uh, when a is through an agate. And what happens is when light is cast onto that solid band, it, sh it casts a shadow through the clear band, which causes that movement in the light that you see. Going on, here's number, get the whole agate. Number 42 is a pair. These are $40 for the pair. 43 has a nice striking white band and some of that uh, parallax on the outside, near the outside skin. Number 44 has some really nice green moss formations on the on there, and that's the last uh, pink Botswana that we have featured today. 45 is a, here, let's go like him, is a pear. That's a really nice one. Full banding to the center, pink. And the next one has a really nice striking white band, number 47. These are $40 each. 48 there. This one has some striking contrast in the color. Number 50. These are $40 each. And then when, when we're done with this tray, Evan, if you could just go up and scan over all of the $40 items. Again, these two trays. Jean, what else do you want to tell us about Botswana agate? Well, you already pointed it out. I mean, um... <clears throat> You, you can see in some of these how, how the the um, <clears throat> center center of the banding is, is always close to the edge of the nodule. That is a characteristic of Botswana agate and Lake Superior agate also, although it's not as easy to see in Lake Superior agate because it's so rare to find a whole whole Lake Superior agate. All right, moving on. We, we promised you some of those eye agates. Here we go. Numbers 53 through 82 are all eye agates. Um, this is a feature in Botswana agate itself. It can happen in other agates, but Botswana agate, there was about, what did you say, 5%? About 5% of, of the agates had a visual eyes. eyes in them. Um, so if you, even, if you order the rough, you may find an, an eye agate in your rough material still. Imported, already tumbled from South Africa in this way, correct? Correct. So these are all $15 each. Let me move that down so you can see the number. There you go. $15 on each and every one of these eye agates. These are fairly exceptional eye agates. Um, uh, most eyes on the, on the surface of the agate nodule are quite small. Um, two, three, four millimeters is about what most of them are. But most of these uh, eyes, will, most of these agates will contain eyes that are, uh, I think all of them are 10, about 10 millimeters. It looks like there's some, a few smaller, but um, yeah, maybe up to 12 yeah. on some of those. I should say that... Uh, uh, about 19, the late 1980s, the Botswana government put an embargo on the sale of rough. So no matter what uh, type of Botswana agate, it was, it was not available until after, it was not available anymore after that. All right, moving on here, we're going to move on to our fairy stones. Jean? Oh, wait. I forgot these. The, if you're just looking for a sample of an eye, we do offer these Botswana agates individually on our website. We can have them for um, 2 4 and $10 each. We also have uh, these Botswana agate pebbles available, which are $5.99 each. Moving on to the fairy stones. 
last week we we promised featured in this week's feed um, fairy stones are a type of concretion I'll get the light you want the light oh no no you're okay no we don't want the never mind it's fine fairy stones are special formations that are found in the Heracana River in the Quebec region of Canada the flat stones are round in shape and have a special and unique patterns. They have been formed over thousands of years by the deposit of calcium carbonate on small pebbles or fossils in the very center. Con uh, fairy stones are a type of concretion, and you can find concretions all over, can't you, Jean? Yes, anywhere. So uh, tell us about more about concretions generally, Jean. Uh, they're generally found in sedimentary rock, um, and there has to be something something in the sedimentary rock that, that caused a space or a small space or like a fossil or a, a break or something, and then you have subsequent minerals flowing through the rock, and they start to collect, and they collect and expand in the cavity and form what is called a concretion. The native tribes of Canada would give these as gifts of good luck. And they would also um, put them in their homes for good luck. Here's a few more concretions here. Sometimes you can see some, some unique uh, pictures in them kind of forming like humans or snowmen or people hugging or I don't know, people give them all sorts of names. Oops. And we have a few smaller uh, fairy stones here. Again, these are from Canada, but you can find uh, different types of concretions even in Lake Superior, right, Bob Wright? Anything else you want to tell us about concretions, Jean? Anything else you want to tell us about concretions, Jean? Nothing? Nope. <laughs> okay, one more. Oh, I already did that one. No more. All right. So today's uh, newsletter uh, for the gem shop. Can you get the light, Jean? Today's newsletter for the for the from the gem shop featured. Can you get that black velvet thing? Yep. Featured green kyanite. Come hold it, Jean. There you go. Now you have to show them. Remember. So this green kyanite Annie wrote about in our newsletter this week. And um, <clears throat> it is a, a type of kyanite. Kyanite usually is a pinkish purple kind of color. Um, the green kyanite is said to be uh, potent in aiding nurturing, whether of fledging family relationships or in a new business venture. Green kyanite crystals are perfect for keeping a, a venture on course, a project on schedule, and life on track. These are some of the kyanite... Uh, crystals that aren't on our website, but if you'd like to see more of these, Annie just put up a new batch of these today. And for you um, metalsmiths out there, we did throw some calves in here for you. So sorry, we could not find any bright red calves as requested, but I did take a look, and we're sorry, we just these calves uh, this week in the lap of Juana Agate calves during the feed.
iguana agate cabs during the feed. Here in the H kit comes with a brush and chisel um, and that plaster block there. Okay, we're back on. Sorry about that. Um, once you dig out the fossils in your little paleontology lesson, you can picture identify on the back of the box there what you can find in each one. These are $14.99 a piece, item 112. Make a kid really happy, no matter the age. Let's move this out of the way. So this is our rock and mineral excavation kit. And all of these items on the bottom there are featured in each and every one of those kits. Again, with the identification chart on the back of the packaging. Really fun for kids to excavate out, find treasure, and identify what they found. Another really fun thing to do at home, I know we're talking about home activities, is to start rock tumbling. The gem shop carries a bunch of different types, I think over 40 different types of tumbling rough on our website. And we also have in stock um, all of the grits and fillers that you need to start tumbling from home. We do carry Lortone tumblers. The Model 3A there is what Evan was showing. That one runs for less than 100 bucks. Um, and you can start tumbling at home for, for a really reasonable price. Refer to our website there for, to order those. Um, we have a, I had a lot of phone calls this week about um, customers wanting to start up their lapidary equipment. So I thought perhaps that offering some used equipment would be a good idea for today's feed. So this first one here that we have, number 120, is a wood wheel, and it is, its asking price is $90. This is used for diamond paste. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different wheels that you would put different grit diamond paste on. And um, this wheel or this type of machine is generally used for polishing sapphires and rubies or harder minerals such as those. Um, this looks like it's brand new out of the box. It, the cord isn't even um, unwrapped there. $90 on number 120. The next piece of used equipment that we have is this really neat um, drill press. If you wanted to start drilling some things at home, this is designed to use with diamond drill bits, which we also offer for sale on our website. Number 121 on that, and it is 125. The price is 125 for the drill press. Can I say something about that? Yeah. This is this drill press is designed with a with a cam, so it it's automatic. It has an automatic up and down pulsating action, which is necessary for using. A diamond drill bit to a rock. So item number 122 is a six inch arbor and it has two expandable drums on it with sanding belts. It has the uh, feed axis for water hoses but the water hoses are not hooked up on this. That's something you'd have to get at the hardware store. It does have um, mounted with a motor on on this board here that is cleverly placed out uh, in front of the table so that you have working room and you're not leaning over as far. I thought that was kind of a cute idea. Um, that six inch arbor, you want to say something about the star unit? Um, this is a, a, a star arbor. It's all cast aluminum. It's one of the best arbors um, made. And it's, it's also very versatile. It's very easy to take, take uh, something off of here if you wanted to put a grinding wheel on here and have a grinding wheel and a sanding drum, you could do that. They also make discs that go on the sides. So um, it's very popular among people who, who have multiple pieces of equipment and want versatility. All right, that's item number 122. That six inch arbor is going for 275. Number 123 is this really cute diamond polishing unit. This is going for 150. It has this cute little uh, compartment here that opens up and it has these different discs for your diamond paste and then a little holder on the side for your diamond paste, whoever designed it. So this, this has three discs inside and one on the motor. It has an on and off switch 
and it's just meant for this these canvas discs to be put on with that diamond paste. So, um, Jean, item number 124 is our used uh, 10 inch trim saw. It does have this plat uh, this cover. It is cracked in several different places, but still functional. What else can you tell us about this saw, Jean? It's a, it's a real good saw. We used it ourselves for a while when we were cutting a bunch of Malawi agates. Um, it does have a vise, but it does not have the um, automatic feed that goes with it. I mean, it could be hooked up with a weight feed if necessary to use the vise, but it's a, it's a, it's a very good little trim saw. It's a 10 inch blade. 10 inch blade. Um, that is a 10 inch saw and it's going for 350. Yeah, it's mounted at the motor and everything. New bearings, right Jean? Oh yes, it has, it has new bearings in it too. So we're gonna swing over here and show you a few more rough rock before we end uh, tonight's live session with one of Jean's mining stories. Here's uh, four different new types of tumbling rough that we received in Tucson. The first one here, number 125, is polychrome jasper from Madagascar. Really colorful material. Nice. I think this would be really fun to tumble. Uh, the next item here is 126, this dark smoky quartz. Goes for $9 a pound off our website, or you can order it through the comments section here. This is uh, has really nice dark color. Um, not as translucent as this material that we got in which is from Brazil. This has much more translucency, but is not as dark. Still has some crystal shapes in there. This material is also $9 a pound. This last tumbling rough material that we got new in Tucson is this Brazilian amethyst. Really nice translucent material. Probably fun to tumble. If you want some new things to tumble, I would suggest those. And over to the cutting corner with Jean, let's talk about cutting Botswana agates. How many different types of tumbling material do we have? Uh, 46, I think. Okay. 46 or so. We might be out of a few, but we have quite a few. Let's talk about Botswana agate. Here's some of that rough hole nodules. This is one of the um, types of Botswana agate that we sell off our site and at shows usually. Uh, you'll see that this braid has all full nodules, or um, if it has a broken face, it can cut a full-faced specimen. This material goes for $12 a pound. I re we didn't have this from our original importation in the 70s, the, but this rock was also imported in the 70s by another collector out in California. Um, he collected went down to the ports in California with his son, picked up 50 kilo sacks of Botswana, um, and drove them back to his house and stacked them up on the side of his garage and never thought of them again. They were buried over time, and 44 years later, he contacted us and saying, well, I think I have some Botswana agate that I'd like to sell. So we went out to California and we got it, and it was quite the venture, but quite amazing because we know exactly when it came into the United States, and it is that old stock that was available in the 70s. It's very unusual to be able to sell whole nodules of Botswana agate. It's, it is embargoed from the country of Botswana now, and it was only exported for a, three or four years from, the, from South Africa back in the 70s. All right, our next item here is the pink Botswana. These are um, mostly half to whole nodules, I would say. Some of them have been uh, pre-tumbled on the outside to expose some of that color, so you can tell this one was not, but this one was. So just be aware of that uh, difference when ordering. This material goes for $20 a pound. And the next thing we have in our little cutting corner is this Brockman Jasper. Jean, would you like to talk about how to cut Brockman? Uh, here's a slab of Brockman Jasper, and this dark area here is hematite, which gets a black, really black, shiny uh, look when you polish it. And Brockman is basically a C material, and it's fairly easy to see um, see the seam, and you simply cut cut perpendicular to the seam to get the the best advantage for the hematite. 
The last rock that we wanted to show you tonight was this new rough smoky quartz we imported from Brazil for Tucson. Would you like to say anything about this rock, Jean? Yeah, this is very, very nice rock um, and has multiple lapidary uses. It, it's, I think it's exceptionally good for its price. Um, and there are enough clear areas in here that, that I mean, it, it could even be used for, uh, for faceting or some of it could be used for faceting, if a, especially a beginning facet if you want something that's, uh, that's cheap to, do, to practice on. Um, I don't know if you can see how, how, how large areas of clear areas in there. All right. So we're that was um, that's it for our live feed for items for sale. But as promised, we will end today's live feed with one of Jean's mining operation stories. I'm going to this sit in this chair and tell tell another story from uh, <laughs> my little collection of mining stories from uh, uh, mining Morris night. Um, for those of you who are getting ready to eat dinner, the title of this story is The Snake That Came to Dinner. Um, I was working very hard on the road down to the Christine Marie uh, one day, and then when, when my work was done, I would have to walk all the way back up to the top um, where, where the cabin was to, uh, for the night. This was a climb of about um, 500 feet, five or 600 feet. <laughs> and by the time I got up to the cabin uh, that particular day, I was completely exhausted. So I was in the cabin. Uh, I had my a little um, card table here with my propane stove on it. I started cooking some potatoes and onions. I had them sitting there in the stove. And I was sitting in a chair just like this, um, completely exhausted and leaning back like this. And the weather was changing outside. There was this terrible wind blowing and unusual clouds. And much to my surprise, in front of the, I'm staring out the door of the cabin. Here comes a rattlesnake slithering along in front of the door. It got halfway past the front door and then stood up a little bit and looked straight into the cabin. It looked straight at me. Um, I didn't quite know what to do and I thought, well, the snake is just going on somewhere else. So I leaned over like this and uh, picked up a little pebble and threw it at the snake and said, just, you know, go on. The snake immediately came straight at me, into the cabin. Now, um, I like science fiction. I read a lot of science fiction books, and I've always been intrigued by the idea of teleportation. I want to say that this is my only experience in my lifetime, teleportation. I was sitting in the chair, and the snake came straight at me, and the next thing I remember is I'm outside the cabin, looking into the cabin with the snake and my supper cooking on the propane stove. So then um, my heart was pounding and I didn't know quite what to do and I'm starting to come back around thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do about this? I thought, well, okay, I'll go get my gun, which happened to be in the truck, wasn't in the cabin, luckily, and uh, take care of the snake. I got up to the front door of the cabin and then made another realization. Well, uh, I have all my explosives stored in the cabin. It's not a very good place to be shooting a gun with your explosives there. So I peeked into the door of the cabin to try to see the snake. I could not see it, um, but the front area was open, so I stepped inside, and there I could finally see that the snake was off in the corner over by my cooler, 
opposite of where explosives were stored. So I climbed up on the bunk and shot the snake, took it outside, nailed it to the wall of the cabin as a, <clears throat> a warning to other snakes to do not bother me when it's time to eat dinner. Have a pleasant <laughs> evening. So we have a request to scan over the Botswana numbers one more time. Can we do that, Evan? And then we're just going to show you a, a preview of what we're going to show next week. Do you need that light? So, again, Botswana agates, numbers 1 through 7 were $10 each. Numbers 8 through 14 were $15. Numbers 15 through 28 were $25 each, and numbers 29 through 52 were $40 each or by the pair. And then next week, we thought it would be fun for Gene to talk about his mining adventures at Agua Nueva. So that is something that was uh, requested, a customer request, as well as something that uh, Gene's dying to tell you about. Because <laughs> actually, I think he just wants to go, <laughs> go to Mexico. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We're going to um, call it a night here. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Stay home. Stay safe. Goodbye. Yeah.